Field are back in Edmonton for another night and another chance to bring glory to their country. 24 hours ago, Team Canada surprised everyone but themselves as they rose to the occasion to defend their home dirt and stand in control of their own destiny. Before round one, the fans were treated to plenty of explosions, not to mention explosive action. So expect more of the same. For tonight, we decide the PBR's inaugural Global Cup. For centuries, it's been a singular man versus beast battle. But now, the script will be rewritten. Defend your home turf. It's man versus beast and nation versus nation. The best bull riders in the world competing for Global Bull Riding's ultimate prize. The PBR Global Cup. Team Brazil clearly setting the standard. Five countries all share a piece. Five times throughout the year, four countries leave their home shores to battle on foreign soil. Lachlan Richardson leading and helping Team Australia stay in the hunt. Successfully defend your country's soil. Retain your piece of the cup. Mexico is on the board. Fall short and watch your country's horn and home dirt ride away. Stormy Wing has brought the red, white, and blue even. Possess the sacred soil of all five territories simultaneously and win the crown jewel of bull riding. Canada on the board. It's time to fly the maple leaf. In the inaugural Global Cup starts the perfect way for the host country. The PBR Global Cup. The ultimate battle for bull riding's international prize. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final round of the PBR Global Cup. Mexico, Alfonso Orzoco, Juan Carlos Contreras, Francisco Morales. Please welcome from Montezuma, Edgar Durazo, Ricardo Orozco, Alejandro Gabal Calvo, Johanton Santilla, and led by their coach, PBR World Champion, Michael Gaffney. Time to go to the land down under in Team Australia. Being led out by Gresford, New South Wales, Australia's Cliff Richardson. From Claremont, Queensland, Aaron Clyer. From Dysart, Queensland, Sonny Shafirius. From Queensland, this is Kurt Shepard. From Coonamble, New South Wales, Nathan Burtonshaw. From Gresford, New South Wales, Lachlan Richardson. From Upper Horton, New South Wales, Troy Wilkinson. And being led by their coach, three-time world champion, Adriano Marias. And now it is time to meet the team from Brazil.
We begin with the first talent that comes to us in the newly crowned PBR Rookie of the Year, Jose Vitor Lime. Please welcome Rubens Barbosa. From Sao Paulo, Brazil, Joao Ricardo Vieira. Brazil's Fabiano Vieira. Please welcome world champ, Guilherme Marchi. Eduardo Parasidu. We say hello to the three-time world champ, Silvano Alves. And led by their coach, three-time PBR world finals champ, Robson Palermo. Time to go south of the border to the boys representing the red, white, and blue. It is time to meet Team USA. We begin with a man from Texas. This is Cole Mwansad. From Oklahoma, Brennan Eldred. From Paris, Tennessee, Cody Nance. From Dalhart, Texas, Stormy Wing. Another man for the Lone Star State of Texas, Cody Teal. From Walla, Walla, Washington, Derek Cole Baba. From Jasper, Texas, the 2016 World Champion, Cooper Davis. And their coach, two-time World Champion, Justin McBride. Damn, I thought that going faster than I could keep up. Canada, are you ready? It's time to meet the pride of your country. Let's go, Team Canada. We'll begin with a talent from Fairview, Alberta. Please welcome Cole Young. From Cadogan, Alberta, Mr. Lonnie. From Lundgren, this is Wyatt Lachlan. From Players Home, Alberta, Logan Beaver. From Kamloops, British Columbia, Jackson Scott. From Milk River, Alberta, Dayton Johnston. From Strathmore, this is young Ty Patton. From Tisdale, Saskatchewan, Justin Ward. From Middle Lake, Saskatchewan, this is Cody Coverchuk. Champ from Pinocchio, Zane Lambert. Three time PBR World Finals qualifier for Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, Tanner Byrne. Please welcome to do it in Alberta, Brock Radford. From Dawson Creek, British Columbia, Jake Gardner. And the coach from Yellowgrass, Saskatchewan, Aaron as we celebrate our sports elite athletes and get ready for tonight's action, we also take the time to recognize our country's finest. For today is Remembrance Day. For our ceremony this evening, we welcome the 3rd Battalion, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. This battalion specializes in executing missions in severely restrictive terrain and in areas where armored vehicle mobility is difficult or impossible. They are trained in a variety of insertion methods like parachute, helicopter, vehicle, boat, and by foot, and excel in operating in complex terrains. These men and women are true Canadian heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, the 3rd Battalion, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. This battalion recently deployed soldiers to operate 
Croatian reassurance in Eastern Europe as part of NATO assurance and deterrence measures to the summer of 2017 in response to wildfires in British Columbia. Operation Impact, Canada's contribution to the global coalition in Iraq and Syria. In Operation Proteus, Canada's contribution to the Office of the United States Secretary Coordinator in Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, would you please say hello to the 3rd Battalion, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. Please join the soldiers of Alpha Company as we honor the courage and devotion of brave men and women who made the supreme sacrifice of dying for their country. They shall not, they shall grow not old. As we that are left grow old, age shall not weary them, or the years condemn at the going down of the sun and the morning, we shall remember them. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to remain standing for the singing of our national anthem performed by Mike Paul.
and on guard for thee. A moving tribute and start to our final night here in Rogers Place. Hello everyone, I'm Craig Hummer. We welcome you to night number two and the defining moment in the PBR's first ever inaugural, that is the Global Cup. Now it's five teams representing the international bull riding community, all with something to fight for and more importantly, and none so then, the home country of Canada. Let's take a look at our standings. Canada has the lead after night number one, United States and Brazil nipping at their collective heels. Australia and Team Mexico still with something very much to fight for. When you talk about the top team, well, they are going to be without their top two performers from day number one, Dakota Butter, who has been competing down in the United States most of the season. He is out, stepped on after his ride in round number one. Coy Robbins had a ride in the bonus round and that caused a concussion. Let's look at Dakota Butter's ride. It was a board big shot. 84 and a quarter points into his hand. It was after the eight second mark and you can barely tell but right there. Big shot came down on that left foot. Three confirmed fractures. Butter is out. I mentioned Coy Robbins. Well, what a show he put on. In round number one, the 2017 Canadian Rook of the Year rode plenty cool for 85 and a quarter. That helped Canada to one of their six rides. Then in the bonus round, this got scary. Whiskey hand put Robbins down on the ground in a big way. Knocked unconscious and then unable to ride this evening. It's time to welcome in two of my partners for the evening, the Iron Man, J.W. Hart, as well as the man who can do it all, Matt West. J.W., I tell you what, Canada has made it tough on the rest of these teams, and as the home team, not only do they have this crowd behind them, but they have sent a message to all these other teams. They have, they quite possibly came in as one of the bottom underdogs. I mean, they was truly a long shot. They come in today too, not just winning, but ahead of the game, and they look confident. But you talked about those injuries of Corey Robinson and Dakota Butter. And the thing about it is that the thing that bothers me a little bit was with Aaron Roy's decision to take one of those spots and put one of his most inconsistent riders right now, uh, Tanner Byrne, in that spot and let him ride twice tonight. Kind of questionable. This is where the coaches come into it. The captains come in and make all these decisions. They've got their work cut out for them, but they do have the home crowd advantage, and it is a big crowd. Well, one of the things we have talked about throughout the first night and we'll continue the discussion this evening is that chess game between the coaches. One of the things we do know for sure, Kaiki Pacheco, one of the perennial world champion favorites over the three years he's been in the PBR, he is out due an aggravation to that groin injury. And I guess if you're going to have an alternate, what an alternate to have. Three-time PBR world champion Silvano Alves, Matt, is going to take his place. I've got to put it to you first. Do you think that switch is going to help or hinder Brazil spoil this home team party? Well, first things first, you talked about a chess game, and we didn't not know this was going to happen until we got to the building today. I think Robson Palermo knew it this morning. He kept it close to his vest. Didn't want the other teams to know. But I think bad news for Kaiki is good news for Team Brazil. Silvano Alves, fresh off a trip to Las Vegas where he finished second in the aggregate to another one of his teammates, Jose Vitor Leme. First time he bucked off last night, but I think Silvano Alves comes in. Kaiki has been a little bit cold as of late. Silvano, on the other hand, he's been hot. I think Team Brazil turns this into a big time positive. And we all heard last night, this crowd in Rogers Place, definitely an extra man for Canada. And speaking of Canada, when we come back, they are gonna get bucking going. Not only are they gonna try to hold serve, but they are gonna try to close out this match and maintain the lead all the way to winning this first ever Global Cup. Inaugural Global Cup.
starts the perfect way for the host country, Zane Lambert, one of the top men on this team. And that is a third qualified ride for the home nation. Justin Lloyd gets section two for Canada, started off in fine fashion. It's time to fly the Maple Leaf. The red and white of Canada on full display. It's brought to you by Encore by Epcor. Carefree energy plans so you can live every beautiful moment. Encore by Epcor. We welcome you back inside Rogers Place, night number two about to begin. Let's reestablish these ground rules. Each team made up of seven men, except for the host country, in this case Canada. They get 14 men to try to accomplish the 14 best scores. Remember, that is 14 scores over not just night number one and night number two, but at the end of each night, each team gets to choose two bonus riders to face off against the best bulls here at this year's Global Cup. Those final 14 scores are all added together. As promised, the home country, Canada, gets us started. Cody Coverchuk going up against Modified Clyde. And Modified Clyde makes quick work of the Cowboy from Saskatchewan. And J-Dub, that's a common theme whenever we see Modified Clyde leave the shoots. Yeah, he doesn't get ridden a whole lot, even on the big tour, but he hangs a horn there. I think this bull was wanting to go left, but when he hung that horn, it kind of swapped his lead direction. He went to the right, and Corey just wasn't set for that turn to the right. A little bit different format this evening. Last night, all the teams went together. Tonight, it'll be one rider from each country within each section, except for Canada. They will have two riders in each section based on being the home country. In fact, we're going to get to see Tanner Byrne on two separate occasions because Canada technically is a man down. Next up for the United States of America, it's Cody Teal. He finished the PBR season last week in Las Vegas, 14th overall in the world standings. He had a tall task, J-Dub, last night facing Beaver Creek Bow. Springer Mountain won't be much easier. This is going to be a lot of the same up and down the direction. Beaver Springer Mountain finally gets into that right-handed spin, but it's going to be borderline whether or not Cody Teal is offered a re-ride. You can see, however, the red, white, and blue celebrating because that ride will be the sixth for Team USA and probably put them ahead of Canada. Well, they're just looking to get some scores on the board to catch up with Canada, but in the end, they're going to have to have good scores. So if the flags don't fly, you know, the bull ends strong, but he just started weak, and, and sometimes that'll that'll help those judges get those scores back up there. You see, he started out a really re, a really a good chance for a rear, and then he turns back in his hand and gets the score up there a little bit, and uh, probably cost him from getting a re-ride. No, J-Dub, you're spot on. The judges were impressed. 83 and a quarter. That's Teal's first ride, but that's going to put the U.S. ahead overall. Let's move on to the Australian. Cliff Richardson. Lachlan Richardson's younger brother got a ride in round one. It was a good one. 86 and a quarter aboard checkered flag. Here, Matt, he faces Blue Gangster. Yeah, we talked about Cliff Richardson last night with his great score. He kind of had the hot hand, not selected in the bonus round. Doesn't work worry about it. That's the coach's choice, trying to make it two in a row. Australia has an answer for teams U Team USA's ride a moment ago. And the green and gold of the land down under gets to celebrate early. And gang, let's not forget, there's a bonus for best individual rider. Richardson's right there. Greg, he's two for two. We talked about it earlier. The locker room morale with Adriano Marias. This guy is spending some time in there coaching. They had Andy Watson, our PBR photographer, in there looking at photos from last night, talking about some minor adjustments that these guys could make. They're going to make them. Team Australia's fired up. Cliff Richardson has got the hot hand here in Edmonton. Still waiting on his score. There it is, 85 and a quarter. 
So with his two bull total, that's going to put him right behind his brother. So the Richardson brothers sitting first and second. And we quickly move on to the veteran of Team Mexico, Francisco Morales. And this is a good bull, J-Dub. Red sails in the sunset. Good bull from Chad Berger. One of the reasons why the riders like that bull dub is he is very honest, and Morales almost was able to take advantage. Yeah, and you can just see these, these Mexicans, when they come in here, they start really good bulls, and, and they start good rides, but they just can't finish them. They're, they're just not used to this caliber of a bull that stays as equally as strong or gets a little stronger throughout the ride, and that's the difference between the lower level and this level. Morales' buck off, not what Team Mexico wanted, but Brazil now will get their opportunity in this first section. It's none other than world number four, Eduardo Aparecido. No rider was in the number one position longer this season than Aparecido, but he faltered towards the finish, J-Dub. What do you think he can do against the Knuckles? Well, I, I think it's a great matchup, and th this bull has no uh, recorded rides on pro bull tests, but I don't think he's ever faced a guy like Eduardo. Well, the knuckle doesn't care what your buckle shows or says, and Aparecido very surprisingly bucked off in this second round. This one surprises me, Craig. You watch this bull as he turns back here to the right end of his hand. He's got him picked up well, but he just steps forward. He feels him get over there a little bit too far. He goes back the other way, and Eduardo just misses. Watch right here as he's moving here. That bull feels him in there. He steps ahead. When he steps ahead, he gets Eduardo lean back, and then when he goes left, Eduardo just can't catch up to him. That's going to hurt Team Brazil's chances to stay even with Team USA. Cody Teal already riding Springer Mountain. This Rogers Place crowd is going to get vocal for one of the most decorated Canadian riders ever. Tanner Bird faces RebuildTexas.org, J-Dub. You know, we talked about it in the opening that uh, Tanner's going to have to get on two here tonight. And it, it kind of it kind of surprises me that uh, Aaron Roy, the captain, would do that with Tanner. Tanner's one of the most inconsistent guys on Team Canada right now. He's one of the best overall. I mean, he's, he's got the records to show it. But right now, he's not playing a hot hand, and he has to get on two of them. So he's got to start right here tonight. RebuildTexas.org is going to perhaps rebuild his strategy. Tanner Byrne makes the eight, and that is one way to increase your coach's confidence is go out and get the job done. You know, I thought this might be a rewrite. You watch this bull kind of gander across the arena. He's not doing a whole lot, but a lot like uh, the USA's bull. Kind of got into it there, but then took off again. I thought this could have been a rewrite, and if he's much, right, he's 82 and a quarter. I, that was a pretty good score for no better bull than he had. And again, Canada needed that. They will now move back ahead of Team USA overall. Let's send it down to Matt. Tanner, that was a huge ride. So much pride in this building tonight. You had your whole team behind you. How good does that feel? It's amazing, man. Uh, never had this team aspect before, and it's, I have to say, the coolest bull ride I've been a part of countries behind us our buddies are coming together it's awesome Craig I was in the locker room with Team Canada they are here to win and nothing else let's look at the overall standings based on that first section of riders Canada USA they are in one and two positions Canada 583 and 75 508 and a half for Team USA Australia and Brazil fighting for that third position. Well, Team USA's Stormy Wing is poised to take flight yet again in the hopes of giving his country a chance to soar above the rest. Credit Stormy Wing with doing the work. Textbook ride from Cole Baba. And on a night when the red, white, and blue needed a score to keep pace with Brazil, of course it's on a bull named Stars and Stripes that gets them to equal ground. Stormy Wing has brought the red, white, and blue even with the
the green and gold of Australia. Five qualified rides now for Team USA. We welcome you back to the top of the world. We are trying to decide the top country of the bull riding world. Section two, these are your riders. It's gonna start with Canada's Jackson Scott. We'll also check in with Canadian Zane Lambert, their national champion. Three-time PBR world champ Silvano Alves was a sub today for Kaik Nishako. He is in the mix as well. We start with Jackson Scott. And Matt West, this matchup against Kool-Aid could be a pivotal one for Canada. It's also a little deja vu for Jackson Scott. He's had this bull before, doesn't have to go too far back to think about how it turned out. As a matter of fact, the qualifying round here on Thursday, he rode this bull for 86 and a quarter points. Talk to him in the locker room. I don't know that there's a more confident bull rider in Edmonton than this guy, Jackson Scott, riding for the home country. British Columbia Cowboy finished third in that qualifier. But this time, it's Kool-Aid that gets to make the noise and break through. There will be no repeat. And Jackson Scott so far is over two. Craig, this bull has a, a lot better day today than he did on Thursday. A little more juicy, kind of bucks out across there. When he comes around, he starts kind of getting into it. And he catches him a gear right here and he gets him behind. And when he does, his inside foot comes up, bucks him down. That's one that got away from Canada. Canada, if you're just joining us, a full bull ahead over both of these two days. Each team counts their 14 best scores. They are added together. The team with the most points wins this inaugural PBR Global Cup. Next up from Australia, Kurt Shepard, who was able to ride snake eyes in round number one for 84 and a quarter. Dub here he faces Hunky Sam. Yeah, this bull doesn't really live up to his name. He's not a real honky. This is just a good bull to ride, look like. I've seen some videos of him on Pro Bull Stats, and this is the one that the guys are going to want to get on. And uh, he goes to the left. That's in the Kurt's hand. And uh, this is a pretty good matchup for uh, Team Australia. Kurt Shepard had a great 2017, won the PBR Australian Cairns event, was also Australia's last Cowboy standing. He won that title in July. This is a man who has been on the Built for Tough series since Atlanta last season. The man really, though, J-Dub, who at times has struggled. He's one of those riders, I think, that against a second-tier level bull can ride lights out, but against the top level of go for tough series bulls, he struggles. Well, I've seen him on days. He's even top-tier bulls he had, you know, had some consistency, but just not enough to really structure into that top five or 10 in the world standing. But this is not really fall in, bull doesn't fall in that top tier, just a good one for him. Australia with some fight. And it looks as though Kurt Shepard is going to register another ride. That would be the sixth ride for Australia and bring them close to Team USA. Well, you, you said it just right. Australia is here to fight, and that's what they do. They come in with their jaws cocked and, and square chins and ready to get it on, and they do just that. Win, lose, or draw, you will not find a tougher team here this weekend. There are only four riders with two qualified rides. Three of them are from the land down under. Kirk Shepard is going to get a score. 84 and three quarters, moving him into fourth overall. And it's Edgar Durazzo's turn. The 26-year-old Mexican rider had a fantastic ride, J-Dub, in the bonus round last night versus South Texas Gangster. Yeah, I thought it was one of the best rides of the night just because of the way it started out. It was a wreck in the beginning, but he never quit. He never picked his chin up, and he went to him when they, when they got clear. Uh, you know, this bull is a couple out there, and then he's going to be to the right, or he should be the left, and he should go back to the right. And, uh, you know, if he can get around him the first couple of corners to the, to the left, 
then he jumps out and goes back to the right. That's going to be into his hand. That's an advantage as, it, as if he would go to the right first. But uh, it's a good matchup. This is a good bull. This bull actually originated, originated in the state of Oklahoma down south. Long way from home. Smiling Bob is this bull's name. Durazo with a second qualified ride. Inserting himself in the equation for the $50,000 bonus for the individual rider with the highest total. You know what? This bull is supposed to go in normal trips, one, two, and around the left and back to the right. Bull decides to stick it into the right gear first. Just picks him up perfectly, rides him really well. This is what you want to see out of the Mexican bull rider. Edgar Durazo, a man who has traveled throughout all the lower tier tours throughout North America, Canada, Mexico, the United States. All that experience paying off, 85 and a quarter versus Smiling Bob, and that's going to move him all the way up to second overall. There are your standings, and remember, for the guy who has the highest total after our second bonus round, $50,000 richer. Lachlan Richardson, the Australian, yet to ride tonight, and perhaps he will get another opportunity in his bonus round, much like this man on day number one. U.S.'s Stormy Wing here faces night vision. The only thing that scares me about this matchup is, is uh, Stormy's going to be doing about 100, and this bull's going to do about 65. And if, if uh, Stormy can slow his gears down a little bit, this could get good. Stormy Wing brings the U.S. not only even with Canada, on ride numbers, but perhaps surpassing the host nation on that overall total. I tell you what, Craig, this is where the USA is going to shine because this bull right here, all the videos I've seen of him, he's from Canada. I didn't know this bull, but I've watched videos of him all day. And he turned back to the left, but he was not near this fast, not this much gas. He was just a real nice bull. I was almost assured that he was going to be a practice bull, but the first couple of rounds, he's a handful. Stormy Wing gets him gathered up and then gives him the Randolphs around there. And I'm telling you what, this turns into a good bull ride of 87 points. And uh, when it comes to style points, Team USA is going to be hard to beat. You know when you see the Randolph start to fly, there's some style getting worked into the equation. Let's send it to Matt. Stormy Bull, uh, he had a way better out today than we thought he would have. More importantly, you just put your team in the number one position. Hey, man, just one at a time, and uh, glad I could do it. I love all these guys, and uh, just making it work. We got It ain't over till the fat lady sings, but... Uh, Feels good to be number one right now. Quite possibly the closest net team in this competition. Let's show those team standings, and USA has moved in front by roughly 12 points ahead of Canada, who is trying to defend their home turf. Team Australia right in the mix as well. For the first time this weekend, we're going to see one of the most veteran and decorated riders in PBR history. Three-time world champion, Silvano Alves J-Dub was the alternate, let me repeat that, was the alternate for Team Brazil. Crazy, huh? And I don't know anything about this bull, but I do know a lot about the bull rider. <laughs> and he has stormed back in a, in a resurgence in his career after winning three world titles and kind of going on a cold streak for a year or so. But I'm telling you what, Silvano looked as good as anybody at the PBR World Finals, and I don't know that I wouldn't have made him one of the, the main guys on my team coming in here. An injury substitute for Kaiki Pacheco. He's on the clock, which means he only has 15 seconds to nod or he'll be disqualified. Well, when you need a qualified ride, why wouldn't you go to the man that has done pretty much everything in this sport? Alves, in crunch time, delivers for Brazil. He comes through big time. You know, we talked to Shorty Gorham a lot on the telecast of the Built Ford Tough Series, and, and he, he 
Jake talks a lot about Silvano's hip movement. And when he feels good in his hips, he rides good. And he had to feel good in his hips to make this ride because you look, he's all up inside, he's to the outside. He's a half a foot to a foot off his bull rope the whole time. Great effort by three-time world champion. Alves, after going four for six at the world finals a week ago, is one for one here, remains to be seen. There's the man who he took the place of, Pacheco, giving him some props. Zane Lambert is next to ride, and he told us earlier how much this event means on multiple levels. Oh, definitely. I think Canadians are very proud of what we do here and, and uh, who we are as people. We stand up for our country, and, and we love where we live, and uh, we'll fight to protect it. And that makes me really proud. My grandfather fought in the war and, and was a big part of making this a free country. And so, yeah, something sticks close to, close to home for me. Zane touching on the fact that today is Remembrance Day and you walk throughout the streets of Edmonton, guys, and I know you did it as well today. Everywhere you turn, there were ceremonies and events going on and it was, very moving for me to walk around this town and see just what this country not only stands for, but how they celebrated it today. This is Zane Lambert's opportunity to help that celebration. Facing a bull by the name of Darkness, and J-Dub, this is the bull that I believe Lachlan Richardson rode in round one. Yeah, he rode him uh, last night for 86 and a half. And he should be right in the gate to route. That's going to play into Zane Lambert's uh, wheelhouse just because he's got his right hand down. He rides with a Brazilian-style rope. It's going to be a little further down the side, give him a good, strong anchor point to that inside. But watch out if the bull goes back the other way. Zane's a little bit uh, has a history of when they go back the other way to get a little bit set down and run back off his rope and get that, that riding on straight. So. As long as the bull keeps going right, I, I give Zane the advantage here. Matt, we often talk about momentum in the sport, and it's been a pretty darn good month for Zane Lambert, coming off winning his second Canadian National Championship. Seems like he can do no wrong of late. Look, it really has been a good season. It's been a good couple of years for Zane Lambert. He picked up another Canadian title. This is the guy that stays up more than the border when he has opportunities to come to the States. He's that prideful of his country, and it's going to show right here. Zane Lambert uses the bull darkness to bring the spotlight back on Team Canada. Another qualified ride. 85 and a half points. Outstanding bull ride. Bull's got good timing, good kick, decent speed. Zane rides him for everything he's got. Really good bull ride. Nothing wrong with it. This is the guy that if I had to pick one guy to get on two bulls tonight, nothing against Tanner Byrne, but this would have been my guy. Now there are six men with at least two qualified rides. Team Canada, why wouldn't they cheer? One of their best riders converting and giving them yet another opportunity to celebrate. Lambert moves to 167 points total. That'll slot in right behind Australian Kurt Shepard. But more importantly, with $400,000 on the line for the winning team, Canada moves a bull ahead once again of Team USA. So far, Ozzy Lachlan Richardson has stepped up in a big way. But he can't rest on his laurels. If he wants to keep Australia on the rise. Richardson, after going 0 for 5 at the PBR World Finals a week ago, is a perfect 2 for 2 here, leading and helping Team Australia stay in the hunt for the Global Cup. Justin, Team Canada obviously riding a wave of confidence and success. What do you tell your team of heavy hitters to try to keep up pace? Well, we're not, we're not concerned with anything but the bulls that they're facing. Um, you know, Team Canada's doing good, and, and all the teams are riding really good tonight. Um, my guys have some great matchups, and I tell you, they're riding for their country and they're riding for each other. And, and 
When they're doing that, you could see the way Cody Teal started off. That bull was terrible to get by, and he refused to let go of him. Uh, so I love where I love where Team USA is at right now. Just like the old song says, whatever you do, don't let go. <laughs> well, in Section 3, Team USA is going to have a great litmus test in the form of 2016 PBR World Champ Cooper Davis against the bull. He has not only faced twice, but two times ridden for over 90. We're going to start with Wyatt Laughlin. We'll check in also with Joao Ricardo Vieira, and we speak about the Canadian Wyatt Lofton, J Dub. What a bull he faces here in Voodoo 2. Yeah, now this is where it gets a little tougher. Uh, they've got to get another one, you know, on the board to stay ahead of Team USA. This is going to be a tough one. They got the right hand down, you know, the left hand down, which is the right one on this bull because he's going to go left into his hand, but he's going to be a handful stepping the forward around those corners. Wyatt Laughlin is finally thrown free. Give credit to the three bullfighters, Jesse Byrne, Frank Newsom, and Shorty Gorham. But man, oh man, Wyatt Laughlin, J-Dub, looked pretty darn good on Voodoo 2 for over half the required time. Well, this is what I was talking about. Watch this boy, he steps ahead, and then he gets it moving, and he backs up a little bit. He's, he's got that different motion in him. Uh, you know, his daddy, and, or actually his full brother, Voodoo, one of the great bulls we've seen, Justin McBride be the first guy to make the whistle on. He is a lot the same way. And he, and he hits the ground hard, he moves ahead, he kicks hard. This bull's not easy to get by. Well, you said it. That was a test for Canada. And for the moment, they have been left wanting. Wyatt Laughlin did his best. However, this is a sport where your best often doesn't matter. It only matters if you make eight. Joao Ricardo Vieira, meanwhile, faces a bull that Tanner Byrne had in round number one and wasn't able to get the job done. This is a very familiar bull to Built for Tough Series fans, J-Dub, Dusty's Revenge. Yeah, this bull is pretty hard to get by. And when I say that, I'm gonna say it out of both sides of my mouth because the first three seconds is gonna be tough. If JR get past the first three, it's gonna start getting a little bit easier. He kind of drifts off and fades a little bit in his, in his intensity, the bull does. And uh, if he get past three or four seconds, look for JR to make the whistle here. the prettiest out ever from Dusty's Revenge, but give Vieira credit. That was the rubber match between these two, and now Joao is two and one against this bull. With a big stutter step and a swing around that first corner, JR picks him up just perfectly, and when he goes back the other way, this is where JR usually has trouble, but he got to moving, got to leaning forward. If it had been eight, you know, eight and a half seconds, he might not have made the whistle. But Luckily for him, it's only eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the stat sheet would be very different for a lot of these riders if they needed to ride 8.5. But that time, he gets it done. 85 and a half points, and his two bull total now moves him all the way up to six overall. Lachlan Richardson was the star of Team Australia on day number one. And it doesn't get any easier, does it, J-Dub? Because here, he faces Beaver Creek Bow. Yeah, this is a big time matchup. They did put their hottest guy on the rankest bull in this go around. Lachlan Richardson's got his work cut out for him. But he stays the front well enough and uses those legs loose enough, he can make the whistle here. The stat sheet on Beaver Creek Bow is he can be vulnerable to right-handed riders. That is how Lachlan rides. He's right hand down. This bull bucked off Cody Teal last night in around five seconds. He ended up turning to the right, but on this night, Lachlan had no answer for the power behind Beaver Creek Bow. Well, and Team Australia, they're kind of up the judge's tail right here about a re-ride because the bull hipped himself. But see, he hipped himself. You see, he goes across here, and he doesn't. It, that's not what caused the buck off. So no re-ride. They're going to hit the challenge button and review it and make sure the judges are set on their decision, and I don't blame them. 
Adriano Marias, the two-time PBR World Champion, making sure Lachlan is right in the head if he gets chosen for the bonus round later on this evening. Judges are still reviewing this based on Lachlan's challenge. And J-Dub, go into this a little bit more because you hinted at it. Basically, the judges have to decide that the Bulls' contact with the shoot affected the ride overall. Causes the buck off. I mean, it's going to affect the ride, no doubt. But sometimes it just affects what the bull does. He rode him right through it, picked him up well. The bull turns back like he always does and just stretches him out and slings him out of there. I personally don't think it caused uh, was caused for a re-ride, but uh, I've seen them give re-rides for less. I've seen them not give re-rides for worse. So we just have to see where they go with it. Well, and as you were commenting on that, partner, we found out no re-ride. So big ramifications for Richardson. Not only no score for himself, because he's in the running for that individual title, but also no score for Team Australia. This is Alejandro Gamboa Calvo, the Mexican rider, now faces a bull by the name of Bad Moon Rising. And this was a bull that made easy work of Cody Coverchuck in round number one. Yeah, but I've seen quite a bit of video and seen this bull around. Uh, Coverchuck was supposed to ride this bull. This bull's going to be left into his hand. He's like I talked before, he's got that left-handed Brazilian rope kind of run down the side, so he's got a good anchor point, a lot like Zane Lambert on his bull. Bull goes into his hand, he should have the advantage here. Alejandro, a very accomplished rider at the age of 27. His father was a stock contractor in Costa Rica when he was a young boy. One of the most humble men in the Mexican locker room. Bad moon rising, however, turns it into a bad evening. And Calvo on the ground just over three seconds. And he reaches up and grabs his hat just as he leaves the chute when he should have his free arm out in front of him. I don't know what that was all about, but then you watch when he comes off the way he lands. Lucky he don't have a broke arm or dislocated shoulder. Team Mexico right now clearly Let's take a look at the overall team standings now that Gamboa Calvo has bucked off, keeping Team Mexico with a two bull total. The host country, Team Canada, a full bull ahead of Team USA for the moment. Team Brazil right in there with equal number of rides, just, just a little bit less point total. Matt, we've hinted at this matchup. Cooper Davis has to be absolutely salivating for this chance. Well, absolutely. He's been on this bull twice before, and twice he's ridden this bull. He rode him in Big Sky back in 2016 when he won a world title for 92 and a half. But he rode him this year in Napa, Idaho for 91. That tells me that he has this bull's number every single time. And I think Cooper Davis rides today with a chip on his shoulder, J-Dub, after a poor performance in round one. Well, I do believe he rides with a chip on his shoulder, but he set him up, Joe, has a name for a reason. Watch him go back the other way. Cooper's got to be able to pick him up when he does it. I'm pretty sure Cooper Davis does two things when he wakes up in the morning. Throws both his feet onto the floor and makes it look pretty easy. Just like every time he's on Set Him Up Joe, he makes it look as easy as that. And that, my friends, is how you ride one rank bull into your hand, and when he jumps forward and goes back the other way, you lean forward and you start chewing him up with that outside foot. Outstanding bull ride. If you're gonna make a statement, that is the way you do it. It probably is going to be a score close to 90, and that's going to be enough, we think, to move Team USA back into the lead. There it is, 88 and three quarters. Davis is on the board. Team USA is back on top. And the Canadians now send out Logan Beaver. The Alberta rider is aboard Swashbuckler. Good matchup. Bull should be real strong to the left. Swashbuckler takes a bite out of Beaver, and the Canadian rider now 0 for 2 for the weekend. Yep. 
Dub, you said the ball would go to the left, just too much to handle. Way too much to handle. You know, sometimes these guys on this Canadian team hadn't been south of the border to really see these ranker-style bulls, and they're having a hard time keeping up with them. Well, keep in mind, Team Canada has twice as many riders, but at the moment, that does not matter to Team USA. They are now 15 points ahead of their closest challenger, which is the host country, Team Canada. Team Brazil just trying to keep pace. The hero from a moment ago, Cooper Davis, standing by with Matt. Cooper, you and that bull have made magic together now three times. More importantly, you regain the lead for Team USA. Yeah, me and that bull get along really well, and uh, this deal is bigger than just us. It's for our country, so it feels really good. There it is, waving the stars and stripes for Team USA back on top. You are right, Matt. All these teams sense a bigger purpose this weekend. Team Mexico has managed to create some highlights so far, and they know nothing is decided until the last man leaves the shoots. Mexico is on the board. He was fully committed to making the whistle and letting the judges worry about if he is going to get a rewrite. I'd like to see that out of the Mexican Cowboys to show their grit and their toughness. That's the way it's supposed to be done, boys, right there. You never quit. Night number two of the PBR's inaugural Global Cup. Let's show you the section four matchups. We're gonna start with Justin Lloyd and work our way down to the host country's Ty Patton. Starting off with Justin Lloyd, he told us earlier that this event brings him exceptional pride. My proudest moment of being a Canadian would be back in 2010 where the Canadian men's hockey team won the gold medal in Vancouver. It was one of those moments where you didn't know which way it was going to go. The Americans tied it up. It was 2-2 in overtime and Sidney Crosby scored the winning goal. And it was one of those things where there was a lot of good chances going back and forth either way and you didn't know which way it was going to go. But they fought really hard and they come out with what they wanted. And it was a real cool moment in our Canadian history because it was a big deal to everybody. J-Dub, you can tell from that little bit from Justin Loy that there's three things that Canadians definitely love. Their country, hockey, and bull riding. I'll tell you what, and these guys are tough. They live up here in frozen tundra half the year. So uh, you gotta be tough to be from Canada. And they are, and it's their Memorial Day here, and it's a great honor to be here with them. Canada, at least on rides, Matt, is tied with the U.S. Justin Lloyd has a very good opportunity here versus Liberty Tower. Yeah, and Justin Lloyd, another guy for Team Canada that has a hot hand. He was two for two in the qualifying round Thursday night. He rode his bull last night. Comes in here against a bull that's never been ridden. We don't know a lot about this bull, but I know in the four times that uh, he's been out, nobody's figured it out. But I think Justin Lloyd is, you know, riding on that wave of confidence that all those guys around him is showing him right now. J-Dub, go back to your career and, and that feeling as when you're a bull rider that you really are above it all, right? That you can do no wrong. When you're a bull rider, you have to, unfortunately, you have to be selfish. You have to be self-centered. Everything's got to be about you because this is a dangerous sport and you've got to be 100% mentally focused, not physically focused, but mentally focused. And, and you have to, like I said, you have to be selfish. You have to be prepared. You've got to have that toughness. You've got to want everything that everybody has, and you have to go get it. You have to be tougher than the next guy. You have to be tougher than this bull. You have to be mentally tough. And it comes into this sport. This is one of the most humbling sports in the world that you still have to be so tough and so gritty to be successful at. What a great shot. The whole Canadian team, it looks like, is there to help Justin Lloyd. And I mentioned it last night when Team Australia celebrated. It's shots like this that remind us this is the concept of the Global Cup to bring these five bull riding countries together, not only as a team, but for that bond to then be forged to move on country to country as they fight to defend their home dirt. And Canada, with this inaugural Global Cup, is right in this fight. 
We started our show tonight, if you're just joining us, with admitting that most of us were surprised that Team Canada led after night number one. But, Dub, I'm going to go back to you. Aaron Roy, the coach of Team Canada, wasn't surprised at all. No, well, it wasn't just Aaron Roy. There wasn't nobody on that team surprised. I think the only one surprised may have been all the other teams and maybe us in, in the media, you know, and, and everybody that watches. Well, Matt, I'm going to go back to you because you mentioned how no rider had figured out Liberty Tower. Justin Lloyd was far from getting it figured out. Yeah, it didn't last long here for the Canadian. The good news is they've got more to come. As you watch it him back here, you see that boy. He had trouble with him in the buck and shoots. And when he squirts out there, he's already rocked over to the left away from his hand. And, and once he got out there, he just could not get back to the middle. This is where the numbers, even with these buck offs, start to favor Canada. As long as they have one rider in each section get the job done, they will stay in contention all the way into this bonus round. And that's what they need. Meanwhile, Brazil needs a ride to keep pace with the United States and Canada. This is Rubens Barbosa looking for his second score. And on paper, at least, J-Dub, Tequila Sunrise is a bull that he loves. Yeah, and I think they keep pace here. This bull should be the left. He can go to the right, but he's just really a good spinner. And that's where Rubens Barbosa shines, because he can get locked down with that big bicep he has. And it won't make any direction uh, difference on the direction that he goes. Uh, this bull is just a good bull. Should fit him either direction. Uh, but like you said, Team Brazil has to make the whistle here to keep pace with uh, the United States and Canada. Partner, you say should fit him. Well, That's it has it. fit him twice before, both times this year. And usually Tequila Sunrise likes to fire like that in the suit. But as Dub, you remind us all the time, just because you've done something before, that bull doesn't care. No, the bull doesn't know that Rubens has ridden him twice before. And uh, they, can't read the, they can't read the day sheets. They can't read your belt buckle. You've got to make the whistle each and every time. That's Robson Palermo, the coach for Team Brazil. And finally, Ruben's hand, because of the power of Tequila Sunrise, pops out. Matt, I want to go back to you. Read the mood for us. What's it like down there? Which teams are sort of looking fired up? Which teams are looking a little low at the moment? You know what? I think USA right now has more confidence than anybody in the building, uh, and maybe Team Canada, but we've seen them falter a little bit. I think, personally, that Team USA is the most confident team. Now, keep in mind, Team Australia has done something incredible over the last 24 hours. Whatever Adriano Marias has done inside the locker room, it's working. Cliff Richardson rode his bull, and you think, he said, if you think that was good, wait until you watch the rest of my team. They're at an all-time high right now. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that about Adriano Marias because our PBR insider Justin Felisco wrote a great article on the website today about Adriano J-Dub. You rode with him during your career. He just, at times, approaches this sport with a, I don't want to say a fundamental difference, but you just got done talking about confidence. Well, we'll get back to that in a second. Barbosa comes up big for Brazil. It's as simple as that. I tell you what I like about this, Craig, is the Brazilians never slide and ride in, in the cowboy term. You watch him though, he nods in the motion of him sliding up on that bull rope and he makes a good ride. This is what, I think maybe this is what Ruben needs to do every time, just when he starts sliding, start nodding. A lot like J.B. Mooney, it keeps him loose, keeps him cool, and makes him move through those corners. Good ride for Ruben Barbosa. Another look. Tequila Sunrise helped him out into his hand. Barbosa loves that. Barbosa now dominant in the hat trick. Faced Tequila Sunrise three times. That one was worth 85 and three quarters. The lowest total of the three times they've matched, but perhaps the biggest ride in terms of the ramifications. This is Cole Baronson with a chance for two. He faces Bourbon Oak. This is a really good bull coming from Nansen Bowles. Should be the left, kind of the one of the buckier bulls in this pen. 
Colt Melanson, you know, a rookie here, and he's going to go to the uh, National Finals Rodeo in a couple of weeks. Um, seen some video of this kid can do it either direction. He's going to have to re-pull his rope, though. J-Dub, back to you for a second, because we're getting to see Melanson do something you and Justin McBride, as well as Ty Murray, actually highlighted during the World Finals telecast. Is that is this idea of when these riders get thrown around like that and they re-wrap, they're actually, in some ways, teaching the Bulls some bad habits? Well, he never got out of there. I mean, if you, if you let him do that and you get up out of there and reset completely, you kind of do teach him a little bit. But he never got off of it. He stayed down there with him. And, uh, that's not leaving, so we're going to get right. You see the bull is actually laying down in the front end right now, but that's a good way to take these bulls. I, I don't want to call it cheating the bull, but that bull has to have a full move and a standing up to get out of that shoot. And a lot of times the judges will start that clock on their movement up, and you almost have about a half a jump that they're actually just getting up instead of really bucking hard. That's Cooper Davis with the right arm there, keeping the long song safe and does a little clothesline. You have to figure either Justin McBride or another team member is going to push that challenge button. Cooper, Cooper Davis could not get through the people fast enough to get to that replay button. So let's explain to our new viewers what is at stake. When someone challenges a ride like that, when the time is as close to eight seconds as it is, what they are hoping for is when the judges relook at when the bull breaks the plane of the chute, they will restart and retime this sequence. And we'll all take another look now as the replay judges do just that. And they'll look at it in real time. And Team USA, obviously, J-Dub is gonna hope that somewhere, somehow, they find a tenth of a second. Yeah, it's gonna be tough, but uh, you know, what I wanna go back to is, is uh, oh, it looks like he may have made it on one of those replays here but uh, that I'm seeing. But you know what? It, the way he pulled his rope with that bull kind of down in the front end, and when that bull stood up to leave that shoot, it almost looked like his rope was too far up in the center from what he was where, where he's used to riding with it. Oh, my oh, it's gosh, be close, look how huh? close it is. I, well, Team USA is celebrating down here, guys. Matt, look at that. Justin McBride has had a few of those off the side. One in particular won him a world championship. It looks as though, guys, I have not heard confirmation yet, although Team USA is celebrating. It is yet to show on the board that it is a qualified they, ride. They are saying in-house that it is a qualified ride, and nobody ever said it had to be pretty, Craig, to get a score. Now, to get a good score, it's got to be kind of pretty, but he's going to get one. That's going to keep him on the, on the qualified ride list and keep him up with Canada. We'll get to that score when we can. Next up, it's Alfonso Orozco. He had two bulls on day number one, both of the buckoffs, but one on Tequila Sunrise was close. Here he faces Red Peasant. This bull's got some good kick, good timing. He should be the left right here in the gate. Good matchup. He's just got to settle down. The Mexican team's got to settle down and do what they do at home. And free up. Free up and start moving their feet. Don't clamp up when it gets when it gets uh, you know when the rough gets going. You got to start kicking loose. If he makes eight seconds, it would be the third qualified ride for Team Mexico. Keep in mind, in the round, the top score is Cooper Davis, 88 and three quarters. There's money for winning rounds, and we'll keep updating you on that individual total, Team USA's Stormy Wing. We just got the score, 82 and a half points for Melanson. That is a second score for him, and for his coach right there, Justin McBride, back to the action. No score for Alfonso. But let's go back to the bigger picture gang for Team USA real fast. That moves them a full bull ahead of Team Canada. This may be possibly the best bull we've seen out tonight. You see him get off that front end in the air there, and he kicks over his head. Big, strong bull. The, the, the contractor's turned around. I told him, good bull. 
looked at me and said he's just a three-year-old. That is a really big three-year-old that bucked hard, Craig. Yeah, another opportunity to see this bull power that has just become commonplace. Next up, it's Australian Troy Wilkinson. We asked him earlier, who is Troy Wilkinson? Well, I'm, yeah, Troy Wilkinson I'm from a, a small town in New South Wales, Australia, called Upper Horton, and grew up on a farm and uh, been riding bulls since I was, well, been riding cattle, bull calves, sheep since I was a kid. You know, and, and growing up, it's been a dream just to ride in the PBR. You know, we watched we watch them guys, Justin McBride and all them guys ride when we were kids. And, and uh, to be over here amongst it, them guys saying good ride after you make a good bull ride, it's, it's, it's pretty cool and it's, it's a bit overwhelming to start with. But once you settle in and, and put, your, put your mark down, it's, um, it's, it's fun and interesting and, and now it's, it's time to win an event. For Troy Wilkinson, Matt, this has been sort of a coming out year in terms of what he's been able to do at events and really move his riding up to the next level. Yeah, but something he said in that video package really stood out to me, and, you know, looking at those guys, never in his wildest dreams would he have dreamed Adriano Marias would have been coaching him. Happy camper is gonna turn him, however, into an unhappy rider. Wilkinson came in with a very impressive resume, one of the best on Team Australia, but he is now 0 for 2. Now we've seen another really good boy. He had some backup up there and gets Troy pulled down over his head. You know, Denner Barbosa was 87 points on this book at the PBR World Finals just a week ago, so he knew he had his matchup made. Bull wins this one. We've got one more rider left in this section as it looks like Troy Wilkinson would like to take a little bit of a rest out on the shark cage, and now Flint has to pull some duty, and he gets to escort Troy Wilkinson in, and <laughs> that's quite the exit. Canadian Ty Patton is hoping to go two for two, 81 and a half, 24 hours ago aboard Broken Trigger, and J-Dub, he now faces Centrifugal. I'm glad you called that bull's name, because I don't know if Whatever I can pronounce it, it being from Oklahoma. You could call him centrifugal too. There you as it's yeah. centrifugal yeah. force. Really good bull, spins to the right, has good timing, a lot more interesting. I seen a video back in July at a, at a challenger up here, Velocity Tour. This bull was really good with him. He's 84 and a half on him. So this is a good matchup for Canada to get back up there and stay pace with USA now. Well, much like the bull's name. He got into a spin, Ty Patton couldn't keep up, and that's costly because, J-Dub, you mentioned it. Now Canada finds themselves a bull behind the U.S., but not for lack of effort from Ty Patton. Well, one thing about it, they have twice the twice the chances they've got they've got a few more chances to catch back up but at this point now they're going to have to make good twice if the, as long as the united states stays good they've got to they've got to stay good on every single bull well and let's not forget about team brazil on paper they came in with the most dominant squad and they are right there at the moment the point total starting to separate between Team USA and Canada and Brazil. Team USA now almost 100 points ahead, which will become very interesting because basically that means they're two bulls ahead because we've never seen a score higher than 96 and a half in the history of the sport. Well, Team Brazil's rookie sensation, Jose Vitor Leme, looks to rebound here in round two. Pride matters, but it's his and the team's performances upon which they will be judged. Team Brazil on the board. Lemmy's perfection continues. Galerme providing this Rogers Place crowd a little extra. As we suspected, Team Brazil clearly setting the standard. Five out of their seven men ride. We welcome you back to Edmonton, Canada, here on TSN, as well as PBR.com. It's the PBR's first ever Global Cup. We have made it to Section 5. We're going to start with Canadian Brock Radford, check in with Jose Vitor Leme, the Brazilian sensation, and round it out with Cole Young. Matt, 
starting with Brock Radford. Gangster can do is a bull that makes it difficult for everybody. Yeah, but I think Brock Radford has his hammer cocked today. This is a bull that should be around to the left. He's going to keep moving forward. He's going to be a little bit difficult to track, but Brock, that's the book I got on this bull. But Brock's moving the guy, forward. that's what it says. But Brock's a guy that we thought was going to come in here hurt today. I talked to him in the locker room, and he said, He's fine. He's 100%. First off, where are you getting your information, Matt? GrowBullStats.com. He don't move forward. This bull's going to be hard to get out on and get clean on, but when he does, he's going to have a little backup to him either direction. Dollar. Right, guys, guys, remember, this isn't the Analyst Cup. This is the Global Cup. You guys can fight about all that stuff at the end of the evening. Brock Radford, meanwhile, needs to get eight seconds for Team Canada. They are a bull behind USA, tied with Brazil on qualified rides. But remember, for them, this is Canada's chance to defend their dirt. If they lose this first ever Global Cup, it is going to be a harsh ending to the evening where their coach, Aaron Roy, is gonna have to watch that dirt leave the country of Canada. And that is not something this Rogers right, Place bro. crowd is going to be happy to see. But there are plenty of rides to go until that is decided. And Radford gang taking his time. J-Dub, does this favor a rider or a bull when you start to take this long in the shoots? Uh, it favors the bull, there's no doubt about it, because I, I promise you these bulls can take more of it than the guys can. Gangster can do with the parting gift, but Brock Radford just brought this crowd back. Canada now with nine qualified rides. I'm not sure, is Brock going out there to take a bow? Really good ride, both directions. Bull backs up underneath himself, gives him a good seat. Gets a little strung out there at the end. But just like Cole Melanson, doesn't let go and gets the whistle, gets a shot in the side right there for it. But hey, he'll take them all day long, I promise you that. How much will it be worth? Canada, ooh, that again was a nice little hip check. And in a country that loves hockey, they can ex expect and respect a hit like that. 82 and three quarters keeps Canada in contention. Guys, I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying that Cody Nance fought harder than anyone in round one and did not come away with a score against Buda Dawabata. Here he faces mental revenge. It isn't just last night that he fought harder than anybody. He fights harder every time the gate opens. Justin McBride has his boys coached up. Right after Canada comes out with eight, Nance has an answer. Man, not a real good day for this bull, but I don't think it mattered. You watch him. He's got him picked up when he goes to the right away from his hand. And as he goes back, he moves him to the outside, but he gives him a good jump there, and then he just scoots over there, gets that bend in his back. He's got a little bit of a hump in his back. I'd like to see him have his little straighter back going around those corners, but he moves that outside foot well, gets the score, and that just moves Team USA to 10 qualified rides, so they're back to one full bull ahead of Team Canada. It was 82 and three quarters for Canada's Brock Radford. And 84 and a half is gonna push the USA's advantage even greater after those two matched up. Here he is, the rookie sensation, Jose Vitor Lemmy. This is real time. Well, I guess we have our answer for whether or not Lemmy can come back from a buck off. Oh yeah, he can come back. <laughs> This is the most exciting guy I've seen come out of Brazil in a couple of years, probably since Silvano when he first come over. This kid's got fast feet, 
He's got a fast, free arm. He don't make any over-the-top moves that he doesn't need to make, but he's flashy enough that he's going to gain points on those little bit lesser bulls. He's flashy enough to drag a couple more points out of them. And now we've got Aaron Clyer already out of the suits, and Australia has an answer. They're coming fast and furious in round number two, and this Rogers Place crowd is seeing some excellent bull riding. We're still waiting on the score for Lemmy, and now the judges are gonna have to do double duty because they've got Clyer's score to register. Hey, well, this is a good ride too, this little bull. They usually get stronger. He kind of weakened at the end, but I don't think it mattered. Yeah, he rolled all the hair off of him. We're just seeing ride after ride after ride in this section. The green and gold of Brazil celebrated, so why wouldn't the green and gold of Australia get to cheer a little as well? Plyer with 84 and a half. And we also got word a moment ago that Lemmy's score was a whopping 88 and a half. Slots him in second for the round and third overall in the event. There is his score. So Lemmy, you have to figure J-Dub is gonna get to face another bonus bowl after a ride like that. Yeah, if I'm Robson Palermo, he's my go-to guy to get on in those bonus rounds because he by far looks to be the most consistent on-fire bull rider for Team Brazil. This is Jonathan Santalon, bucked off at seven in change in round number one. Team Mexico actually had a number of riders that were over six seconds, which plays to that pride factor, doesn't it, J-Dub, in terms of these guys fighting for every last second? Yeah, they're gonna fight, too. There's there's a lot of pride in this Mexican team. But you know what, this bull, though, on pro bull stats, the only guy that I've known uh, that can make, that's made the whistle on this bull is Galerby Marchi, so you've got a world champion bull rider that's ridden over 600 head of bulls to be the only guy to make the whistle, and you know you got your work cut out for you. boy no match for Santa La. I think the the team Mexico is starting to come alive now they may need a couple more go arounds to catch up them other teams but this is what you expect to see out of the out of the Mexican bull riders is to the rare back stay on give it all they have never quit and it worked out for him today 81 and change. Sent on on the board. And Team Mexico with another hit total. Another opportunity for the home country. Cole Young faces talking smack. And he is going to have to be perfect to face a bull that is perfect in his career. Yeah, this bull right here, Craig has just come out of the PBR World Finals where he bucked off Cody Campbell and Shane Proctor. This bull's a handful. He goes back to the old bull that we all know, SmackDown. Great breed program up there in North Dakota with Chad Berger and the Berger family. This one's a handful. He's got his hands full, and he needs to get a whistle here to keep pace and, and with uh, the state with Team USA. They've got to do it right here. Team USA, a bull ahead of Brazil and Canada, but Brazil, based on scores, has moved ahead of the host country. This will give it an opportunity to move back into second. Based on their points, they cannot catch USA. But they can keep pace with them on the numbers of bulls ridden. That's the key thing. They've got to stay pace and let the numbers work it out in the end. They've got to stay pace with bulls ridden. Young flung to the side 
And talking smack also has pretty good game. When he starts a really good ride right here, I thought he had him picked up really nice around there. He moves that outside leg, but he just gets reared back. He doesn't, doesn't lean forward, doesn't use that free arm to get to the front jump front end of that next jump and it, when it rears him back, we talk about how that G-force starts to compound and it does bring it to him tonight. We only have two sections left before we move into the bonus round. Let's update you on the team standings. The U.S. is a bull ahead and almost 100 points ahead of Team Brazil and Team Canada. Brazil in second, Canada in third, but in this section, no ride was better than Jose Vitor Leme. He went up against Legacy and had all the answers. The score, 88 and a half, and it kept his team in contention. We made it to section six here in Rogers Place. It's gonna start with Canadian Lonnie West. We're also checking with Fabiano Vieira from Brazil. And Tanner Byrne is back. He gets to get on another one in the form of Herf. But J-Dub, let's talk about Lonnie West versus Pound the Alarm. Pound the Alarm is a Canadian bull that has made a name for himself on the big leagues of the Built For Tough series. And we got word before tonight's round that this is the Bulls' final out of his career. Yep, Corey Smelnick family, they raised a great bull here. And uh, they're gonna retire him tonight. This bull went down into the States for a couple of years at Gene Owens. They took him to a couple of PBR World Finals. This bull has been over 90, five or six different times. He's been the Canadian Finals bull three different times of the finals and the champion bull of the, the country. Uh, what a great animal and, and the hats off to him to retire a bull when he's relatively uh, still in his prime. He's past his prime for sure, but he's not, uh, you know, it, it's sad when they take him so long that anybody can ride him, let the bull go out on, on top and they're doing just that. What a great animal and a great tribute to a good family raised a great animal. Matt, Jada mentioned the scores you could get on this bull. Anything over 85 is really going to help Team Canada. And Lonnie West picked up over $24,000 of the qualifier Thursday night. Uh, I think this kid could take this bull out with a bang. They could match up together. It could be a great night for both Lonnie West and Pound the Alarm. Lonnie West already has one qualified ride. There's the nut. It is time to raise the roof of Rogers Place. The base is reverberating. The crowd is on its feet. And as you can see, Team Canada with cause to celebrate. They are celebrating and they can celebrate a good ride. They can celebrate a great ride on a great bull because this bull goes out. Like I said, not the prime of his life, probably not the best day he's ever had, but this is one of the, still one of the best bulls in the pen here at the Global Cup, and he gets to go out on top. What an honor. That is the 10th qualified ride for Team Canada. Matt, you highlighted it. They needed something like this. I tell you what, it's not just Team Canada that's fired up. Every person in this building is at the edge of their seat. I don't know about you, J-Dub, but it's hard to hear anything down here. This building is electric. I tell you what, there's a lot of people in here, and they are pulling for the red and white clover leaves. 86 and a half points. Or should I say maple leaf? I'm That'll <laughs> move Canada back into second, a bull ahead of Brazil, and about 13 points behind Team USA. $400,000 will be split between the winning teams. Remember, each team can only count their 14 best scores if they even get that many. Australia is gonna have a chance to add one with Nathan Burtonshaw facing Gideon Stewart. This is a really good matchup. I like this bull because he, he just come from the PBR World Finals. He likes the right, but he will go to the left. Guys, 
Nathan Burtonshaw is one of the bigger riders on any tour that he's participating in. 6'2", 165 pounds, but you aren't big enough to take a shot like this. Minion Stewart comes back and makes contact. Here's another look. Horn into the head, and J-Dub, you were banged up a lot during your career. Can you even describe what something like that feels like? <laughs> yeah, that did, that's like you're leaning over the plate to take a bite of food and somebody hits you on top of the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> Thankfully, I cannot relate. <laughs> Matt, I don't think you can either, right? Yeah, I don't know that I've ever been hit in the uh, head with a baseball bat at the hey, dinner table. Hey, J-Dub, why are you giving my wife ideas, though? <laughs> well, it was subliminal when she did that thing. This is go. Brennan Eldridge. Back to live action. Okay, once again, let's give credit to the bullfighters, Jesse Byrne, Frank Newsom, and Shorty Gorham, because even though Eldred is hobbling, that could have been a lot worse if it wasn't for the bullfighters. I'll tell you what, this is close all the way around. And I, I, there wasn't really anybody that I liked to match up on this bull, but I, I was a little bit concerned about Brennan's matchup on him, just because the belly roll he has to the right, and, and Brennan's been real bad about getting his free arm behind him, and you watch this bull, he gives him a roll right there, just tips him into his hand, his inside foot comes up, and he just steps all over him. He does step on his leg here once, and uh, gonna be sore, but he'll be okay. Brennan Eldred, that was facing double down, and in this section at least, the U.S. has lost their opportunity to stay ahead of the other teams. Coming off of a ride in the last section, Team Mexico sends out Juan Carlos Contreras, and he faces Anika's pet. You know, guys, his teammate Edgar Durazo has been on this bull a couple of times. This bull's bucked him off a couple of times, but talking to him in the locker room, Edgar said, Juan Carlos should ride this bull dead easy. This shouldn't be a problem for him. Bull should be around to the left. Correct me if I'm wrong, J-Dub, when we watch him. But Team Mexico thinks they've got a solid ride. I in think this they matchup. get the score here. I think this may be the easiest bull in this go around. And he should be into his hand. He should be able to ride him all day. I do believe they will take another look at this because Contreras looked to be on lockdown against Anika's pet, but at the very end, he right as the clock hit eight seconds. J-Dub, I don't know about you, but this, this bull, I think he has a better day than the videos I saw. I mean, he's still around to the left, looks good there. But uh, the videos that I watched, he didn't even look that good. No, he was a little better today than the videos I've watched of him as well. And he's gonna be close. Oh, oh, no. They're going to take that one away, guys. It looks like that one may come away. Yeah, from that angle, it looks like his hand comes out of the rope at 7.9. Yeah, and there you can see it. So officially, it's going to go to 7.95 in a heartbreaking miss for Contreras. Next up, Brazil's Fabiano Vieira, who was absolutely outwitted against hashtag Vegas Strong in round one. Dub, here he faces I Hear Voices. Yeah, and this one I don't think outsmarts him. This bull doesn't have any rides on pro bull stats. Don't know a lot about him, but being on left-hand delivery, I would expect him to be right here to the left. I think the Brazilians have, have uh, found that out. They know it. They know that's Fabiano's direction, and that's why they put him on this bull. It's going to be a good matchup. Gives, uh, gives Team Brazil a chance to tie up the count of Bulls Road against the Team USA and Canada to this point. Guys, we are just getting word that Nathan Burtonshaw will not be able to get on his bull, which means Australia's alternate, Roy Dunn, will be up next facing his bull, Minion Stewart. 
So a lot of alternates getting their chances here throughout this weekend, and as part of that team concept, how do you put together the best team possible? Brazil's alternate, Silvano Alves, has already written tonight. Fabiano usually doesn't take a lot of time in the shoots. There's the nod. When I hear voices change direction, it just seemed like the switch got flipped on Vienna. Well, this this really looks to me like uh, uh, Fabiano might have heard a whistle in his ear. <laughs> Not just hear voices, but he just dips in his hand, steps right off, like he might have heard the whistle. Now he knows he's. He knew he messed up right there and let one really get away because he's about to get a rewrite. Well, Dub, that goes back to something that you know all too well in terms of the internal clock you all have as writers. Yeah, and you, you have it. That was early enough. I don't, I don't believe he had his internal clock turned on. Uh, he's just a, just a mind lapse there. That's a, That was uh, not good. So this is Roy Dunn and getting called into duty quite rapidly after Burton Shaw took that shot. Roy Dunn, the nephew of Australia's probably most famous rider, Troy Dunn. Troy, the winner of the 1998 PBR world title. Clock stops at 3.71, and J-Dub, I think it was pretty clear there was a slap. Yeah, there was a slap right around that first corner there, but what I liked about this is he never quit. He kept riding. He went ahead and finished the ride because you never know. We've seen it time and time again that the judges are, we claim they're blind sometimes. Sometimes they miss things like that, and, uh, you know, you get a score. You just got to hope for the best. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he didn't slap him. Oh, yeah, there he did. Yeah, that's uh, especially when you get that overhead shot. That is pretty evident. Judges did a good job not missing that. And there's Adriano Marias doing something that he loves, and that is pass on his coaching techniques and his passion for the sport. Tanner Byrne, as I mentioned, he is back. And will it be a second qualified ride tonight? Earlier, he was 82 and a quarter on rebuildtexas.org. And here, J-Dub, well, Matt, I'm going to go to you because he faces a bull he's seen twice before. Yeah, he's ridden this bull once. He's bucked off this bull once. More importantly, what happened to Team Canada last night, seven-time Stanley Cup winner and Bob Nicholson from uh, the Oilers Entertainment Group along with Kevin Love, who's won those seven Stanley Cups. They took these guys on an all-access tour into the Oilers locker room, their workout facilities. They made them feel at home, and we, they said, we want you to go out there and defend this home soil. So everything this weekend's on us. Tanner Byrne took it to heart. We saw him qualify earlier tonight with that score. Tanner Byrne looking to do it again. Guys, let's not lose sight of this. This is for the overall lead. This would be an 11th score, the most of any team. And this would move Canada back in front. They started day number two, a bull ahead, and they could go into the last section before our bonus rounds, a bull ahead as well, but Byrne has to do his job. Herf is too much for the 2015 Canadian champion. And Tanner Byrne, guys, we haven't really touched on it much tonight, dealing with a very bad wrist injury for months. And that's one reason, Craig, that I, I question Aaron Roy's judgment to put what I think is his most inconsistent rider right now, and he's got a bad injury on the, to a wrist to make him get on two bulls when he had a great alternate standing by. Well, in sharp contrast to the last segment, this one produced only one 
qualified ride, and it brought Team Canada close to the top of the leaderboard. Let's show you once again, Lonnie West in action. He went up against Pound the Alarm in the Bulls' last career out. Lonnie West was able to take advantage. 86 and a half has brought the host country to their feet. Hockey is is clearly a, a huge deal in Canada, and and to to get into a, a building of that size and and uh, magnitude is is great for for bull riding. It's it's fun to be a part of as an individual. You know, like you say, you walk out there, you can feel feel the energy in a place like that. And if uh, we can fill it up with with all the great Canadian bull riding fans, it's it's going to be great for our sport. Um, you know, I think it's just going to propel bull riding in Canada, it's going to give the bull riders in Canada themselves a taste of, of the action that's to be had around here, um, you know, week in and week out essentially, and inspire these guys to to hit the road and, and get on this tour because, because the opportunities are there. Well, Jesse highlighting the fact that as the host country, all of these Canadian riders feel the importance and the magnitude of these moments. This is Jake Gardner's chance. He comes in as the alternate for Team Canada, and he faces a bull by the name of Deplorable Me. Derek Kobama gets the double dip, same bull he saw last night, Stars and Stripes. But keep in mind, this is another chance for Canada to move a full bull ahead, J-Dub. Yeah, that, he's gonna he re-pull here. He can't get his wrap, Deplorable Me is a really good bull from Chad Berger. I'm kind of confused as why he needed to re-pull. He, he put it right back where he's had it, and they're going to pull it. Maybe just need it a little tighter, but um, we'll just have to see here. It's a good matchup. But like I said, they, they, they really need to get this right on the board right here. Matt, I want to go to a point you mentioned earlier the noise down there on the dirt. This Canadian crowd has stayed very active all night long. Yeah, you know, that can work for you or work against you. Hopefully it works for Team Canada. Well, Jake Gardner, unfortunately, that was a tall task, getting asked to face a bull deplorable media. 18, well, that's the 19th career out, only been ridden on two occasions. Really good bull from Chad Berger. You see, he just leaves behind all the weights on that outside, never even I mean, he gave it a good effort, but he never was in a good seat, and good position to even give that bull a run for his money. Taking a moment to perhaps reflect on whether it was an opportunity to learn or a missed opportunity for the host country. Sonny Shafirius has spent time on the Built Ford Tough Series this season. He's a man who, in the future, has talked about staying more consistent. Well, one of the ways to stay consistent, J-Dub, is to figure out how to beat bulls like this, American Gangster. Yeah, this bull is really good. And he's got some rides under his belt on him, you know, and, and uh, but Sonny, Sonny's not the most consistent, and he knows it. He's got he's to step his game up here to keep his team going. American Gangster, I'm not sure, figured out how to leave the shoot after all this time on tour. Well, he did what he had to do. He's got to hit the button, but you look for a foul. Does he hit him anywhere? He's never hitting his legs, never stopped motion. Everything was clear. That was a really good day for that bull. He should have ridden him. Um, I don't. If it was me, I, if I was a judge, I probably wouldn't give him a re-ride, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see, Craig. They continue to look at it, and American Gangster got very active before he was fully out of the shoot. But, Dub, you already highlighted it. Once he was out, really great motion from the bull, and Shafirius not credited with a re-ride. So he will go 0 for 2. Well, Craig, if you look at the first few jumps, it's all in one place. I mean, and that bullet done broke in the plane. He got away with a good three and a half seconds of just staying in one spot. And then he only had to ride him, you know, six seconds, six, uh, five and a half, six seconds 
to get to the whistle. So um, missed a good shot right there. Derek Kolbaba is not only a great rider, but he is a rider that knows what's at stake. Earlier he mentioned the magnitude of an event like this. Tell you what, this is the bull that he made. I mean, it's it's quite it's kind of a cool little friendly rivalry, I guess you could say, between countries. You know, I'm friends with the Brazilians and Canadians and all those guys, but at the end of the day, you know, when the American flag's flying in the uh, the winter circle, that's that's pretty pretty cool. Dub, I know we cut you off, but this is a unique format, and part of the uniqueness is that we get to see something like this. Last night, Cole Baba was 86 and a half on this bull. Tonight, Coach Justin McBride says, you want to do it all over again? And it wasn't the easiest 86 and a half. That's what I was just about to say. This was a touch and go matter for 86 and a half points. This bull almost bucked Cole Baba off on two or three different occasions. So, with that being said, Kobaba has to learn from what he did last night, correct those couple of mistakes so he don't have to make those same corrections because when you make corrections, sometimes you just get lucky to catch back up. He's got to stay in tune with this one, or this one couldn't get him on the ground. Still taking plenty of prep time. There is America's coach, two-time PBR world champ, Justin McBride. He knows all too well what's at stake. If Kolbaba rides, the U.S. will move ahead once again. They will be a bull ahead of Canada. him to for the second night in a row stars and stripes helps him to a second helping of eight i tell you what i did sit in the locker room with uh, kobaba and the guys earlier and i told him i said well if last night wasn't a fluke you ain't got nothing to worry about he just grinned chewing his bubble gum said ain't no sweat and it wasn't he just dominated him tonight Kolbaba does his job. It's now in the judge's hands. 86 and a half, 24 hours ago. Stars and Stripes doesn't get to celebrate this time. Still awaiting on the score. There it is, 86 points. Pretty darn consistent for Kolbaba. And that's going to help Team USA back in front. Their grand total, 937.25. Canada a bull behind. Now Brazil needs a score as well to move to 10 qualified rides. And it's the man who has more qualified rides in his career than any person in PBR history. 613, actually, including last night's ride. Mark G faces Mudball. All the video I've seen of this bull, they had him on a left hand delivery, and he had a really big fake to the left with a hesitation and a hop skip back to right. But they moved him to the right, so I look for him to be to the right. Galerme Marchi is the best for a reason. Number 614 of an illustrious career. He is two for two. And Brazil still very much in this as we move ever so closer to the bonus rounds. Bull looks a little bit lost when he leaves there, makes him a couple of jumps, and then he gets his feet kind of tangled up when he goes the right. And if you don't take ever advantage of bucking, uh, Galerme Marchi off that you can't, and you go this far and you tangle your feet up into his hand, you're not going to throw this guy off. This guy is missing consistency for 614 <laughs> scores at this point. Few men get as fired up as Galerme Marchi when they make eight seconds. We come to our second to last ride of the regular round number two. It's Ricardo Orozco facing Midnight Rain and hoping to get a qualified ride out of these two days. Needs to get the score here 
Bull's going to fight the shoot a little bit with him. Marchie's score a moment ago was 82 and change. Midnight Reigns, a bull that we've only seen once in his career. That was during the qualifier. He bumped off Cody Coverchuk. The 22 year old Orozco, the younger brother of Alfonso, who is also on Team Mexico. Both brothers watched their father compete growing up, as well as their uncle. Midnight rain ends the evening early for the Mexican Cowboy, and he finishes the weekend 0 for 2. This may be one of the best bulls I've seen tonight. He digs it around that corner. He has a little back up to him. Lots of speed and lots of push off that front end, and just more than the Mexican can handle today. Gets him reared back, gets that arm straight, gets all the weight off those, those legs, and they come up and just uh, gets out from under him. That was a great bull. We've come down to our final rider, and it represents, he represents the host nation, an opportunity to move back in front, or at least to come close to the U.S. Dayton Johnston, and his attempt aboard Muddy Water. Troy Wilkinson, J-Dub, had this bull in round one and lasted about four seconds. Well, they even get close. He you know, he's going to have to be 99 some points to get back in the lead, which I would say probably kind of impossible, but you never know, I guess. But he's got to make the whistle here just to keep pace with the United States. He can't let one get by him here. I know they've got two rides in the bonus round to catch back up, but you don't want to have to do it against those ranker type bulls. You need to do it right here and then be able to go ahead in that rank pin. And that, J-Dub, brings up the best point of the evening, is that when we move to the bonus rounds, it goes not just one, but perhaps two or three notches tougher in the bull power. Yeah, you want to talk about stepping your game up. So if you have trouble in these rounds, it is going to be even more difficult when we get into those bonus opportunities. But to speak on this matchup, Dayton had this bull back in May in Prince Albert at a Touring Pro Division event. He rode this bull. And to expand on what J.W. Hayes said, he was only 84 points there. But a qualified ride is a qualified ride, and the score is a score right now, and it helps keep him in this ballgame. I think we'll talk a lot during the intermission with our PBR insider, Justin Felisco. But, gang, with all of these qualified rides in round two, I wouldn't want to be a team coach. Who the heck are they going to pick for their two riders? They only get two picks for the bonus round. That'll be after Bye, Johnson's ride. Bye, Muddy Water makes the team competition a little clearer. USA will stay in front. And as we head to the bonus rounds, Canada and Brazil will be a bull behind. That's just, J-Dub, a bull doing what he's supposed to do. That's all he's supposed to do, too, Craig, is kick, spin, do everything he can. Dayton Johnson just, uh, I wouldn't say let his team down, but they're going to be behind the gun now. They're going to be uh, kind of hung in behind that eight ball. They've got the work cut out for them in that, in that bonus round. Here are your team standings as we head to the bonus round, which will be two rides each for these five countries. What's at stake? The Global Cup and a cool $400,000 to the overall winning team. USA a full bull ahead, and here's why. Moments ago, Derek Kolbaba for the second time in two days rides Stars and Stripes for 86. And then Marchi, he has an answer, which keeps Brazil close. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, the site 
of the first ever Global Cup. We are inside Rogers Place, and what a two days it has been, and more specifically, what a night number two. Team USA leads everyone, erasing a full bull deficit at the start of the session. They now are a bull ahead of Brazil and Canada. Hello again, everybody. I'm Craig Hummer, and it is time once again to welcome in our PBR insider, Justin Felisco. And Justin, we have talked all week long about the coaches and the decisions they are going to have to make. And look what's happened. It comes down to their coach's pick. What info do you have? Just McBride, Craig. He is very relaxed right now. He's very happy. Team USA, six for seven tonight, storming into the lead. And now they get the top pick in the draft. And unofficially, Just McBride wants to go with Cooper Davis here on Catfish John a rematch from the World Finals two years ago, Craig, when Davis rode this bowl for 91 points to win the world title. This is a great matchup. And the other point, Craig, that McBride want to make, Stormy Wink, a perfect three for three. He's going to ride any bullets left and win not just this individual title, Craig, but the event title. Well, one of the reasons why Stormy Wing is a perfect three for three is his ride this evening on night vision worth 87 points. And again, let's go back to the confidence factor of Team U. USA. You and I had a chance to visit a lot with Justin McBride today, and it almost felt like he had an ace up his sleeve. He, like, he knew something was going to happen like this tonight. The crazy thing, Craig, is no one really talked about Stormy Wing as the pace setter for this squad, but this is a very young team. A lot of young guys. Stormy Wing is the second oldest rider on this team, but he's riding like the best. Three for three, and he's giving McBride some, some character in the locker room, some laughter, some seriousness. He's balanced that act very, very well. Well, the bonus round is going to decide this Global Cup, so let's go down on the dirt and listen to these picks of the final two riders for each country. I have up here right now all of our team captains, also the CEO of the Professional Bull Riders, Mr. Sean Gleason. Important moment indeed. Two pools of very difficult bulls right now they will select from. The leading team will select first, then clearly the Americans, then we will go down, and then it will reverse the order. Team Mexico will have the first pick in Pool B. Justin McBride, Team USA, will pick for you Cowboy and Bull. Cowboy will be Cooper Davis, Bull will be Catfish John. Catfish John and Cooper Davis will be the matchup selected by Team USA. We go now to Rob Cipollermo, Team Brazil. Rubens Barbosa, first buck. Rubens Barbosa on first buckle. Now we go to Aaron Roy, Team Canada, in the mix here. Pearl Harbor, Zane Lambert. Zane Lambert on Pearl Harbor, and wow, swinging for the fence. The PBR Canadian champ, now Team Australia, the three-time PBR world champ, Adriano Moraes. Adriano? Cliff on Gambini. Cliff on Gambini. We're going Gambini for Team Australia. And move now, Michael Gaffney. It'll be Francisco Morales on smooth sailing. Francisco Morales on smooth sailing. Stay here with me. We'll reverse that order. You will now have the number one pick for Pool B, the final pool of bulls to go. That'll be Edgar Durazo on Whiskey Hand. Whiskey Hand and Edgar Durazo. Now we'll move back to Australia. Adriano Morales. Lachlan on Blue Stone. Lachlan Richardson on Blue Stone. Blue Stone. Now Team Canada. The three Bulls remain. Very important pick right here for Aaron Roy. Aaron? Lonnie West on Red Bandana. Lonnie West on Red Bandana. Canada, I can tell you, they've got the Bulls to swing for. And now Brazil talking it over with Silvano Alves. Three-time PBR world champ right now in Palermo Alves. Last two Bulls should be Malik and South Texas Gangster. Malik in South Texas Gangster. Vito Malik. He is going to go with the new young man, Vito Lime, on the bull Malik. That means you will have South Texas Gangster. And who will you put on him? Stormy Wing. Stormy Wing on South Texas Gangster. That is the picks and the way they are laid out right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the pool is set. We'll be back moments from right now. Clint, back to you. We'll be back to analyze the coach's decision-making prowess. More when we return. Welcome back. The bonus round about to begin. Before it does, let's check in with J.W. Hart. Craig, I got team uh, coach of Canada, Aaron Roy. 
Aaron, I know you're, you've, two bulls are a full bull behind. You've got to make up some ground, but you really need the scores. Tell me a little bit of the reasoning behind putting Zane Lambert on Pearl Harbor, quite possibly the hardest bull in the world to ride right now. Uh, Zane Lambert, he lives for the moments like this. These big events, uh, he's riding better than anybody else. And I talked to him before. We had two picks, and he said, if it comes down, he's getting on Pearl Harbor. He doesn't matter what, what bull we have in there. He said, pick me Pearl Harbor. He's confident. And I, I believe in him. He's riding 100% better than anybody here, and he's rising to the moment. Fair enough. There you have it, Craig. Well, we've made a lot about the coaches and how their thinking processes factor in to how their teams are going to do. And you heard it right there from Aaron Roy, his decision-making based on the confidence he has in his riders. This is the first section of our bonus round. It begins with Francisco Morales, and then the Mexican team will send out Edgar Durazzo versus Whiskey Hand. Keep in mind that this order is based on how they are as a team, fifth through first. The final ride of the evening will be Stormy Wing. So we move on to Francisco Morales. The bull he faces, smooth sailing, Jada. Really good bull. Should be right here, either direction. He's got his foot up, gonna put some pressure on his leg back here. Really good matchup. This is a Chad Berger bull, either direction. I gotta give, I gotta give the advantage to the bull, though. We've seen the Mexicans struggle when it comes to the little tougher bulls, and this is the not just a little tougher pin of bulls. This uh, this pin here is gonna be a lot tougher. Yeah. That is indeed true, and Matt, we were talking about that right before intermission. This is one of those tests that for some of the other countries that don't compete very often on the real built for tough series, these bulls can be an eye opener. Francisco Morales is a 35 year old that spends more time in the gym than most kids half his age. However, this bull has only really been ridden three times. And when we talk about the, uh, the opportunities for Team Mexico, unfortunately, I think this bull shuts it down. This bull bucked off smooth with Kaiki Pacheco in round number one. It only lasted three seconds. That was last night. Pacheco, of course, not at his best. And in fact, Pacheco has been bucked off this bull multiple times. Smooth sailing. It's a bit of an inside joke from Chad Berger and his crew because this bull is not smooth on any level, J Dub. No, and he's not going to get any smoother when the gate opens. He act like he wanted his rope to get a little more up in the center. Or he act like it slid a little bit. Uh, just got to give him time to re pull here. See if he can get a little better shot at him. Team Mexico, when I walked in the locker room earlier tonight, they were smiling like they were in contention for this win. And speaking with their coach, PBR World Champ Michael Gaffney, he talked about the experience that these guys were garnering while also feeling that they still had a shot every time they got on the back of these bulls. Reach up there. Reach up. Man, smooth sailing puts Morales on the ground and docks him ever so quickly to the dirt. Really big, strong jumps out of here, just way more than Francisco could handle. See, it lifts him up, slides him off his rope. Lucky his hand comes out of there so he don't flip him to the other side and maybe collide with that left horn. Well, when we get to this level, gentlemen, you expect to see scores like smooth sailing just registered. 44 and a half points as we move on to Cliff Richardson. Here in this bonus round, Adriano Marias has paired him up, J-Dub, against Gambini. Well, a little interesting fact about this bull is last night they had this bull moved over to the right-hand deliveries, and the Brazilians picked him, didn't know he was supposed to be on the right-hand delivery. They didn't understand that the, the move was before the event started. They kind of argued it. Chad Berger said he didn't care what side, move it wherever he wanted. They moved him back to the left and, and brought Jose uh, Vitor Lima down before the whistle. Tonight, the, the, everything was correct. They got it in in time to put him on a right-hand delivery, so we're just about to see what happens. Oh. 
As a fan, you just hate to see that. Cliff Richardson brought the fight to Gambini, but is unable to register the eight. Bull kicks out there, hits flat-footed, then just gets it on. And he's moving over the top of his head just the way he's supposed to. He starts to get a little behind right there. Maybe if he picks his left foot up and starts to kind of spur with him a little bit, it helps him get over there at the inside a little further. But uh, I'm not sure that he makes it, Craig. It's going to be close, but I think they're going to be disappointed to get a zero. Well, and as we take another look at this, Matt, he takes a shot at the end. Yeah, it takes a shot at the end, but we've talked all weekend long about how tough these Australians are. And the thing about Cliff Richardson is we mentioned earlier, why didn't he get on the bonus bowl last night? He kind of had a hot hand. Well, this is a guy that is just tremendously excited to be here and represent his home country. They've got a ton of cup events. And you saw right there taking a shot, but showing how tough he is, he walks away like nothing happened. Yeah, you mentioned those events. He and his brother Lachlan, they are on a flight tonight, flying to Las Vegas, then to LA, then home to Australia to get ready for their upcoming season. Well, here's the matchup. Zane Lambert against Pearl Harbor. It was 24 hours ago that Kaiki Pacheco was shown the door on Pearl Harbor. Now we're about to see if this crowd in Rogers Place can allow Zane Lambert to sprout some wings. Sometimes, Craig, in the heat of the moment, sometimes our pride gets the best of us. And I think the pride got in the way of a little better decision of Aaron Roy and St. Lambert to get on the rankest bull in the world right now, or just one of the very rankest bulls on planet Earth right now. It's not a good matchup on paper. Oh, come on, JW. We're in their home country. Why would you not pick the rankest bull in the world to try to make a statement in front of the home state? I'm with you, but they've got to have two rides. They can't just get by with one. They've got to get it. But if he does make the whistle, they'll have half of it. Pearl Harbor plants Lambert into the dirt and Canada's chance to defend their home turf is now nearly impossible. They needed both rides mathematically, and that one lasts 4.47. You see he's got his knees pulled up. He knows he's going to the right. He's giving it all he's got. you got to give Zane Lambert a for, an E for effort and an A for the grade, but he's just not going to make the whistle. When you get leaned back this far on one this rank, one of the best days I've seen Pearl Harbor have in the last couple of months. Outstanding bull. Hats off to Chad Berger. J-Dub, the judges agreed with you. Pearl Harbor score 46 and a quarter. And you said during last night's round, if he had had a couple outs like he did in our first night of bonus activity, won this year's world champion, Buck and Bull. Well, he just backed it up two days in a row. Maybe Chad Berger has his new formula. This is Rubens Barbosa with Brazil's chance to stay in the hunt. Even if he bucks off, mathematically there's still a possibility, but the score would have to be close to 97 on their final ride, which means Barbosa needs eight seconds right here aboard first buckle, or realistically, Team USA has won this with one qualified ride out of their final two. It's not over because this is a big time matchup. I've seen video of this bull. I've seen him over two years worth of videos. And I'm telling you, this bull has a lot of front end action. He gets up in that front, he's a big, strong bull. Gonna have a little action to him. Sometimes this bull doesn't kick square over his head. And that makes him gonna be a little bit stronger on Barbosa's riding arm. But he has the biggest gun on that right arm that I've seen in PBR history. So I tell you what, he's got his work cut out for him, but he can't get it done right here. And if he does, I look for a big score, Craig. Well, this bull is a perfect 12-0 in his career. in a big way. Just one of the
of the interesting dynamics to me was how were they going to select the two guys that would go into these bonus matchups. Rubens Barbosa actually went to Coach Robson Palermo this morning and lobbied for the opportunity tonight. You know, 15, 16 hours before the event, he lobbied to be in this position, and it paid off for Team Brazil. Rubens Barbosa has stepped up in a big way. He is a perfect three for three here in Edmonton, and he continues to keep his team in the hunt. Outstanding goal right, Craig. The goal, like I say, didn't break over Kickney. You almost got lost because he hadn't been ridden this far past a couple of corners. You see the goal take off really cost Barbosa a couple of points, I believe. 87 points. And that's going to move Brazil to within 9.75 points of Team USA. The Stars and Stripes now with their own chance to answer. And guys, we all know what is possible. Cooper Davis with a familiar foe. Earlier tonight, he faced Set Him Up Joe for a third time. Here he faces Catfish John, J-Dub, for a third time. I tell you what, this could be a replay of last year at the PBR World Finals when he won the fifth go around on. And I tell you one thing I like about this matchup, Craig, is this is Cooper Davis' second bull to get on tonight. In my opinion, Cooper Davis is always better on bull number two on any given night. It, the first one is a great warm up for him. He comes back in them championship rounds to shine. This bull is not easy to ride, and he's not going to be a day off even for a world champion. He's going to be right there with a, with a real fine line to the inside or outside. But Cooper Davis has done it before, but he's got to do it right now when, they, when it all counts and his team and his country is on his back. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to watch that ride in slow motion because at about the five second mark, the style was aboard. Catfish John got spurred and taken to the cleaners by Cooper. I tell you what, Justin McBride has assembled a very young and talented team to bring to Canada to go for the World or the Global Cup. And you watch this ride. This is an outstanding ride. When the fine line's there, Cooper Davis takes the boots and spurs to him and makes it count and puts an exclamation point right at the end of it. When you're throwing the Randolphs around at the end of a ride like that, the judges will be impressed. Team USA moves a bull ahead again as all of the members of Justin McBride's squad get in on the action. Excellent, excellent ride, Craig. Cooper Davis without question does his job 89 and a half points and team usa has yet another one four hundred thousand dollars that's a lot of motivation for all these countries but do not think at the end of the day pride is not a factor rubens barbosa had it against first buckle He's now a perfect three for three. Brazil has one more rider to go, still with a slim chance to win this. Meanwhile, Cooper Davis says, not on my watch. I'm gonna do it for everyone down south of the border. Moments ago, Cooper Davis from Team USA, one of the best rides we've seen this weekend and it puts his team a full bull ahead. He's standing by with Matt. Cooper, you've been all smiles since you got off that bull. Uh, you've made your team all smiles. What did Coach Justin McBride say to you just a moment ago? Uh, he just told me, you know, it was a good job. You know, if you lead your team by example, and, and uh, you know, that's what we tried to do. And I'm just lucky to be a part of these guys. They've, they've made me want to be better, and uh, I've had nothing but fun here. You're having fun again, aren't you? I am having fun. It's uh, this is one of the coolest events I've ever been to, and. It's bigger than us. It's all about America right now, and, and uh, I'm proud to be an American. That has been the general consensus for all of Team USA. Right now, they're on fire. 
It has been an amazing two days, and it comes down <laughs> to five pairings. Edgar Durazo is going to start us off. It'll be the last chance for Mexico to add some points. But really what it comes down to is Jose Vitor Lemmy versus Malik. He needs 99 and a half points for Brazil to move into the lead. So for all intents and purposes, the U.S. has won the first ever Global Cup. But it is not official because anything can happen. Edgar Durazo aboard Whiskey Hand. And this is the bull that sent shippers through this crowd, J-Dub, last night when he dispatched and knocked out Coy Robbins. Really good bull, right here to the right. Can't be either direction. He's got his work cut out for him. Not that anything can happen, but uh, it's kind of an uphill battle right here. Whiskey Hand comes in with two qualified rides in his career, and Durazo actually was one of them. Calgary, earlier this year, in June, 84 points. I mentioned earlier in the telecast that Durazo has competed in 28 different events, both in Canada and the United States this year. Two-time winner. You guys actually talked about it last night. Co-champion of the Canadian Finals event title a few weeks ago. This 26-year-old can definitely ride. This bull's leaning against the back of this shoot pretty hard, Craig. They're trying to push him over. They're looking for, looking for a post to slide in there now. Just about every time he wants to slide up, this bull really leans the back. He's wanting to get those starting blocks and get the, get the whole shot out, out of that shoot, but I think he's about ready to go. You have to figure there's another challenge coming everybody's way. Because when you're that close, why wouldn't you? And Dub, I think we all saw that he actually stayed centered on that bull without a hand in the rope for about two seconds. Yeah, that's what you call effort, Craig. Is when, just watch. As he comes around here, he knows what's happening. He's moving that outside leg. He's doing everything he's supposed to do. He just gets a little open with his chest. And it starts leaning back, but the effort is there. There's no doubt. Look at him hang on to that tail of that rope. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, boy. Oh. oh. <laughs> this crowd is Ty goes the runner, doesn't it, Craig? Well, yeah. It does indeed, but I think there's two things, of course, that we're looking at, and the crowd reacted to the most obvious one, which was they thought Durazo was off the dirt before eight. But the judges are also going to be looking at whether or not his hand came out of oh. the rope. Oh, man, there it is. Well, that's pretty conclusive. <laughs> Unless they go to hand. But yet another great example of Team Mexico's effort throughout these two days. And Ty Patton right there with a pat on the back for Durazo. Lachlan Richardson, meanwhile, his coach, Adriana Marias, confident in picking Blue Stone. Really good bull right here. We've seen Cooper Davis be over 90 on him in the PBR World Finals. Going to be one, maybe two jumps and go to the left. And when he goes left, he is going to get it on. This is right here is an outstanding animal athlete from north of the board. When you talk about Blue Stone's stats, 21 career outs, eight qualified rides, providing a couple of them, and the most notable ones to two well-known riders. Calgary, earlier this year at the Stampede, Jess Lockwood, nine and a half. Cooper Davis at the just completed World Finals for 90 points. I know this bull comes from Lauren Hyde. I know he's really high on this bull. He's still got a little, he's still pretty young. Got a big future ahead of him, this bull does. Lachlan actually faced this bull last year. 
And unfortunately for the Australian, it was the same result. Lachlan now 0 for 2 against Bluestone. And I know we've talked a lot about the team ramification, guys, but what was at stake right there for Lachlan was he needed that score to try to move equal to or ahead of Stormy Wing and Rubens Barbosa, and now he ends up a full bull behind both of them. Bull has a really big jump out there and gets him picked up and tipped just a touch into his hand, and he gets behind, he tries to lean back, cut him off, but it's just not, not good enough for this type of bull. Jose Vitor Lemmy with his chance, and remember, it would have to be the best score in PBR history, 99 and a half, if Brazil is to win the first ever Global Cup. At stake, however, for Lemmy is the individual championship and a cool $50,000. He faces Monique. Not that this kid's not capable of setting a new world record in bull riding, but uh, PBR record, I should say. But uh, I don't think the Bulls got it in him, but it is a good matchup, and he's in the running for 50 Gs. So. Malik looked absolutely masterful against a rider who has been nearly perfect over the course of the past three weeks. That means Team USA is your winner of the first ever Global Cup. And two-time PBR world champ Justin McBride, he may not even know it yet. But oh, he knows it. Congratulations <laughs> absolutely to the red, white, and blue. Let's go back to Lemmy and J-Dub just what Malik was able to accomplish. Got caught in his own trap. He's seen that bull a couple of times be right there to the left. He's oversetting in there just a little bit. Bull plays a trick and goes to the right, bucks him down. So guess what? Not only is the team competition decided, but because of Lemmy's buck off, the individual championship is decided as well. Stormy Wing can buck off this bull. It doesn't matter because he wins that individual $50,000 bonus. Two points ahead of Rubens Barbosa without this ride, but Matt West, we know Stormy Wing is never satisfied with getting bucked off. He'd like an exclamation point here. Yeah, you want to talk about a guy that just absolutely loves to fight in this game. Stormy Wing, we've seen him go up against some monster bulls and, and compete. Stormy had a record season this year, and I think he left there, you know, again, like I talked about a lot of these guys, he had a chip on his shoulder. He thought this was the season. He was going to win that million-dollar world title. And so I think he's already got a sight set on 2018, which means not only is this Global Cup exciting, but I can't wait to get to New York City and start off the new season. Stormy Wing won last night's bonus round aboard Red Bandana. That was worth 88 and a quarter. That was also his 10th round win in the season. Earlier tonight, Cooper Davis won round two aboard Set Him Up Joe and is in first for the bonus round. South Texas gangster with a message of his own. And Stormy Wing ends a marvelous two days. A little less than three seconds, less than he had hoped for. Starts out in an excellent ride. Wanted to walk it off, you know, as a walk off home run right here. But uh, didn't end that way. Excellent bull. Turns back away from Stormy's hand. He's moving around there. Just gets set down just a little bit for a second, and when he gets back up that front end, his inside foot comes up and uh, wheels him out of there. Good effort. What a 48 hours it has been here in Canada, and it is fitting. Well, that wasn't a bull. That was just Stormy Wing you heard make that noise. But it's fitting that the host country has the final rider, and Lonnie West now with an opportunity for a third score. It is a very slim chance, but Red Bandana could provide close to the points needed to bring Lonnie West up to Stormy Wing's three bull total. It's not likely, but Red Bandana, J-Dub, we have seen provide some scores, not just close to 90, but over 90. Yeah, 
right, this bull usually looks to the left, or looks to the right, I'm sorry, and it goes left. If that happens, that's in the Lonnie's hand. But remember last night with Stormy Wing, this bull went right in the gate to the right. So he has that unpredictability about him, and he can't override him either direction. He's got to wait for him to make that that initial direction turn and then go to him. He can't set a trap or you will get caught in it. So guys, I want to correct myself and I apologize to our fans. This individual title is not decided. If Lonnie West is 88 and a quarter or better, he will win the individual title. And what a way to send off Team Canada. It is not meant to be. Stormy Wing is your individual champion. Team USA is your overall champion. But this crowd in Rogers Place should be on their feet for their team, the host country. Lonnie West did them proud and took Red Bandana to 4.43. Outstanding boy, looks to the right. Alley man left, he's a little behind from the get-go. Gets him bucked down, cost him 50,000. Another look at Red Bandana's dominance of Lonnie West. But it is a two-day event that is new on the PBR calendar. And what a way to christen this format. It went down to the final rides individually. Stormy Wing, $50,000 richer. Let's send it to Matt. Stormy Wing wanted to capitalize it with a qualified ride. You did not still $50,000 richer in the win. Yes, sir. Uh, just uh, couldn't be, you know, couldn't be more thankful and blessed, and uh, just just glad I could show up and represent my country and uh, love all all my teammates, and I uh, couldn't do it without them. And uh, like I said, just just thankful that uh, you know God blessed me with the ability and the talent to come up here and do what I love. Fantastic weekend. Speaking of your teammates, I want you to go celebrate them. Celebrate with them right now. Team USA on top. Stormy Wing, a phenomenal World Cup. Without question, Matt, and the festivities are not done because we are going to have the presentation and let's send it inside and down on the, the dirt. Two team in the PBR inaugural Global Cup, Team Brazil. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the winning team in the inaugural PBR Global Cup. It is Team USA. And now, we go upstairs in just a couple of moments for this huge moment. We will go upstairs to my colleague, Mr. Brandon Bates. We are here right now with Team USA Captain Coach Justin McBride. It was an incredible performance by your guys. They were gutsy. You talked about how nerve wracking it is. What makes it so nerve wracking in this format so incredible? Well, I think it's everybody getting to represent their country. You know, in the sport of bull riding, you're usually riding for yourself. But in this format, you're, you're riding for the six other guys that are on your team, and you're representing your entire country. So if that don't get you up to, to give it everything you got, nothing ever will. Well, tonight, the, the host country, incredible here. And it was a fight to the finish. It came down to the very end, and no one left. Everybody was engaged because they knew what was on the line. And just, I got to say, the fans here in Canada were unbelievable. Man, and, and I think it goes back. You watch the performance that the Canadian team put on, and it was strong, man. The guys rode great. And that, that I think it goes back to that pride in your country. This is a very proud country, and they should be proud of the team that they had here. Uh, let's give Aaron kind of present the horn, so. 
I'll bring in now the Canadian team captain. One of the most symbolic pieces of this trophy is the fact that as the Global Cup moves around nation to nation, as you started last night's competition, the, the sacred dirt, the Canada soil went into the arena competition and now it will be filled back up with the soil of Canada and handed to the Americans to move forward. Talk to me about, I want to talk to you real quick though. Your team was amazing here this week. They fought very, very hard. These guys wore the, their country on their sleeve. It's, uh, it was great to see them. I had a bunch of young guys and uh, they pulled through. They showed everybody that we can hang with the, the powerhouses of the bull ride in America, Brazil, everybody. So uh, I'm super proud of them and uh, we'll come back next year better. Come back, I'll let you present that trophy. If the Canadian piece of the trophy, Justin McBride will then make his team the symbolic gesture of filling it with the Canadian soil. And I will said, yeah, that would be great. Uh, CEO of the professional board rider, Sean Gleason, up here right now. Hey, this was an absolute brilliant moment for all of the teams involved. We saw incredible bull riding for two days. Absolutely incredible. Edmonton, did you enjoy the inaugural Global Cup event from the PBR? Great words from Justin McBride showing you that yes, they all wanted to win, but at the end of the day, this is a sport where every single one of these athletes respects each other and the job that they are asked to do, not only on the back of a bull, but as Justin McBride said, how seriously they all take the opportunity to represent their country. We are gonna be back to wrap things up. The Global Cup was brought to you by Encore by Epcor. Carefree energy plans so you can live every beautiful moment. Encore by Epcor. Wrapping up the first ever Global Cup, Team USA, the winners. The crowd here in Rogers Place giving them an ovation worthy of these champions. A brand new format that you can expect to stay. Coach two-time PBR world champion Justin McBride leads his team. They finish a full bull ahead of Team Brazil, two bulls ahead of Team Canada, Australia in fourth, and Team Mexico rounds out your bull riding world. $400,000 to Team USA. Guess what? They are all gonna reconvene next year in 2018 in the land down under at Kudos Bank Arena, which is part of Sydney Olympic Park. That will happen June 9th and June 10th. Will Australia be able to defend their soil or will America start to piece together their own re end rendition of the Global Cup? What a couple days it has been. That's Cooper Davis right there saluting the camera, but every rider took their hats off to this format and to their fellow competitors. The first ever Global Cup gets to check the box that says it was a success. And we'll see you all next June. For JW Hart, Matt West, Justin Felisco, and our whole crew, I'm Craig Ummer. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy the holidays.